your Lordship's house. Lords, the noble Lord, Lord Blencathra, has forcefully amplified the serious criticisms of the Delegated Powers Committee in its report published yesterday. I'm privileged to serve on that committee under his excellent chairmanship. I would like to am amplify just one point. The committee contends in its report that clauses 55, 56 and 61 are inappropriate in that they surrender the power to define the meaning of certain phrases to delegated legislation which is not subject to the full scrutiny of pri primary legislation. The noble Lord, Lord, Lord Blenclathra, has emphasised that our committee took no position on the substantive provisions, but they recognised that those provisions were contentious and should therefore be on the face of the bill. I'd like to touch on why those provisions might be contentious. Amongst other things, these clauses give powers to a senior police officer to impose conditions on a procession or assembly where the officer reasonably believes that noise generated by persons taking part may result in, quote, serious disruption to the life of the community, end quote, or, quote, serious disruption to the activities of an organisation which are carried on in the vicinity of the procession or assembly. The bill doesn't define either phrase. Instead, it gives power to the Secretary of State to do so by regulation. This is surely an abuse of parliamentary democracy, where the words of primary legislation are to have a particular meaning, they should be set out on the face of the bill. That would enable us to debate the proposed meaning properly. Now, in fact, we do have a draft of such regulations in relation to the meaning of one phrase, but not the other. The phrase that is defined in the draft regulations is serious disruption to the life of the community. That draft provides that, quote, it may be regarded by the senior police officer a serious disruption to the life of the community if there is, A, a significant delay to the supply of time-sensitive product impacting on the community, or B, prolonged physical disruption to access to essential goods or, and services impacting on the community, unquote. The draft goes on to say that time-sensitive product includes newspapers and perishable items. Essential goods and services means the supply of money, food, water, energy or fuel, a system of communication, a transport facility, a place of worship, an educational facility, a service relating to health or another critical public service. It's quite clear that this will mean that the police may impose conditions on those legitimately, but noisily, picketing their place of work to persuade others to work during a lawful industrial dispute where the workplace is involved in food, water, power, railways, buses, planes, ships, newspapers, mail, TV, radio, film, education, health, local government, civil service or other critical public services. It, in fact, it is hard to think of workplaces which will not be included. But laws, the law on picketing is already highly regulated by statute. It has been so since the Conspiracy and Protection of Property Act in 1875, 146 years ago. It has many times been restricted, most latterly by the Trade Union Act 2016. But this emaciated right to picket peacefully in contemplation or furtherance of a trade dispute still remains. This legislation, th this bill, will give the power to the police to effectively extinguish it in many sectors. Some of your lordships may well think that such further restrictions would be highly desirable. Others uh, will oppose it. But let's have the debate on the basis of the meanings 
set out on the face of the bill, not meanings yet to be determined and then tucked away in secondary legislation which avoids all but cursory parliamentary scrutiny and which we cannot amend. Lords, I ask the noble lady, the minister, to amend the bill by including in it the definitions which she desires. My Lords, I want to raise some concerns about the provision of interpreters in our courts and to suggest a way in which this bill could improve the service. I declare my interest as a Vice President of the Chartered Institute of Linguists. I'm very grateful to the noble Lord, Lord Wolfson, for meeting with me after I raised